Right, we are off. Oh my goodness, look at you two. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. I'm breaking my heart, mate. Right now, there are dogs that need help. Can't stay like that. She's scratching all the time. And there are heroes that are dedicated to saving them. That dog cannot stay in the house. He's certainly a little fighter, this one. Transforming their lives. Let's get the clippers out, please. Without the surgery, she may not make it through this year. It really is going to be a lifesaver for her. Finding them forever homes. Sit. Oh. So you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. My precious boy. And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. And to see them like this is just amazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are the dog rescuers. I love my dog. <laughs>and um, this animal clearly is in distress. It's clear that the um, owner of the dogs punched this dog a, a couple of times. The owner appears to hit young Zeus so hard he hurts his own fists. The 11-month-old dog must be terrified and, just like with us, blows to the head can cause serious damage. Mel wants to get him out of there, but she still has to follow the law. I have to act within the constraints of the legislation that we've got. So I've had a bet review the footage to see whether that dog's suffering or likely to suffer if left in those circumstances. As a result, I've now got a Section 18 vet certificate, which means I can contact the police, then I can take steps to have the dog removed. When you know that you've got to go and investigate an allegation of somebody beating their dog, it is a worry. And so it's um, always nice to have a police officer with you because you just don't know what you're walking into. From the sounds of things, Zeus is at home, but will his owner agree to let him go quietly? Hello there, I'm from the RSPCA. I had a call about your dog. Can we come in and chat? We've had allegations and we have witnesses to say that you've been beating Zeus. 
Um, oh. Based on this information, we are obliged to take the dog into possession under the Animal Welfare Act to keep it safe while we investigate what's happened. Sometimes I scream for a dog, you know, because I, he uh, doesn't listen. Yeah, uh, that, that's your I, I play, play, play with him, but don't beat him. The owner claims it's just rough play. <laughs> but the overwhelming evidence says otherwise. People who hit their dogs are essentially bullies. They are taking their aggression and frustration out on an animal. It is not acceptable in any circumstances. We need to remove him to a place of uh, safety. We, 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 can, uh, we can... don't accept that. Doesn't matter. I'm obliged to seize him, so you've got no choice. With the police's support, Mel can take young Zeus. I'll be coming back to interview you. These are serious yeah, allegations. Yeah, yeah. Come on then, Thank good you. boy. It's OK. As soon as Zeus gets out of the house, he appears to be showing good signs boy. of anxiety. Who knows what this poor lad has been through? Good boy. It's in his best interests to be removed from the property. Oh, good boy. He's a big lad to lift. Good boy. We need to just get him checked over by the vet to make sure he's OK, and then we'll pop him somewhere um, safe while we investigate what's happened. He doesn't look too bad considering what we've seen on footage, so that's really good news. Fingers crossed there won't be any lasting damage to Zeus. Bedfordshire, Inspector Mel Fisher has rescued 11-month-old Zeus, a German shepherd. Oh, good boy. Come on, should we go see the vet? Mel received complaints and footage which showed Zeus being punched by his owner. Good boy. Right, we need to grab your lead. Good lad. You're coming down. Good boy. There we go. And she's brought him to see vet Daisy Sutton to find out if the beatings have caused anxious Zeus any lasting damage. Hi, Zeusy. Hi, you are huge. You've got a very thick collar and lead. Super duper, right. Calm, calm, good boy. I know, darling. Perhaps as a result of what he's been through, Zeus isn't keen on having his head touched. I know, I know, darling. Good boy. So Daisy checks the rest of his body first. Good boy, I know, honey. Oh, all the way down. Need him up again. You good boy, yes. You're a good boy. boy. Perfect. <laughs> oh, what was that? Are you talking? Oh, there we go, perfect. In the video, it was, I feel like it was the right side of his face, I feel like he was yeah, not having fun with. Have a look. Susie Pops, can I have a little oh, look, darling? Boy. I know you're nervous, darling. Good boy. Good boy, Zeusors. I'm not having much reaction, which is good news. Thankfully, it looks as though Zeus hasn't got a head injury. But whilst they're inspecting him, Mel discovers something else. I've just realised that's not nice, what they've just put on there. That's so horrible, spiky chain chain. Mm -hmm. Let's get that off. Oh, you're a big lad. <laughs> horrible, horrible things. Oh, you're free. Zeus's owner handed him over wearing a pinch collar. These can cause pain and distress to a dog. The collar goes round the throat, and then as the dog pulls against the choke chain, the spikes then stick into the throat, um, trying to train them, I guess, not to pull. But there's kind of, far kind of ways to do it. Really nasty. You can see, look, it's left imprints on my hand. Although this type of collar isn't illegal, animal charities would like to see them banned. I'm so sorry, Zeus. I didn't realise that was what you had on you. I think it's concerning that the, the owner obviously thought it was fine to put it on and then give the dog to you as well. Yeah. You know, it's a concern that he thinks is completely normal enough that you wouldn't mind it as well. Thankfully, his, his neck looks OK. He's lucky that he's a big dog with a big, thick load of fur around his neck. 
so it's not caused any damage I can see at the moment. So that's good news for him. <laughs> he's looking pretty good health-wise. I think he's got a lucky escape. Okay, thank you. Right, good luck. With bye, it. bye. Come on, then, Zeus. Good boy, good boy. This way, this way, put him. It just really saddens me that not only has that dog been put through what we've seen in the footage, they also seem to think it's perfectly acceptable for the dog to wear a, a chain with barbs in it, which in essence just pull onto the dog's skin. German Shepherds are really clever, and it doesn't take a lot for them to learn through positive reinforcement. There's just, there's just no need for it. On the surface, Zeus looks OK. Right, let's shut you up. But what he's endured at the hands of his owner may have left deeper emotional scars. It's all going to be good, little man. Be a good boy. It's OK, pudding. We'll find out how he's getting on later. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one place for this. Meanwhile, in Sunderland, Inspector Jackie Miller is dealing with a very different case. She's on her way to collect a family of dogs from an owner who's struggling and has called for help. It's a lady that we've been working with for quite a while. Um, unfortunately, the environment in which the dogs and herself are not really, really that good. She's got four adults and five two-week-old puppies. The nine dogs, three generations of crossbreeds, have been kept inside and are using the house as a toilet. I attended on the weekend, and unfortunately, no improvements had really been made at all. She's just got to the point where she's accepted she can't cope anymore, so she's rang us and asked to rehome them. Each year, thousands of dogs are signed over to the RSPCA, so this type of situation isn't uncommon for Jackie. Hiya. Are they in? Are they all in? Hi, guys. Come on, back, back, back. You still not managed to have a little bit of a clean up? I, I can't even imagine looking after more than one dog, how people do it with sort of three, four, five, six. I, I, I don't know. It's just so much work. You know, it's four, five, six times worth of poop. Vet bills, food. Don't stand in the poop. I don't want poopy paws. No. As well as faeces on the floor, the family of dogs are infested with fleas, which can cause anemia in puppies and, in severe cases, can be fatal. It's all scratching, guys, I know. I think they might be biting me. <sighs> fleas are a pain. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll sometimes be driving along and all of a sudden one will go ping. Um, yeah, they're horrible, horrible little things. They just get everywhere. With nearly enough dogs to form a football team, Jackie wants to reassure the owner she's made the right call. I don't think you've made this decision lightly. We'll get them sorted. Don't worry. OK. Good boy, Molly. First of the flea-ridden family taken to the van is the puppy's dad, Marley. Come here, Sonna. It's all right. Good boy. But the outside world is a lot to take in for the poor lad. Good lad, I know. You don't get out very often, do you, Sonna? Come on, you've got a lot to do. In you go. Come in, good boy. Next out is the puppy's big brother, Pumba, who, unlike Marley, is keen to make an exit. Not, not on the camera. It's all right, big lad. No? No weebies? Come on, then. Good lad, Puma. Come on. I know it's scary. It's all different, isn't it? it won't be in long, lads. Good girl, Jessie. Pumba is followed by Jessie, the puppy's 12-year-old gran. Oh, good girl. In we go. Who can't wait to get into the van. And last but not least, Jackie brings out Mum, called Nana. 
this could get confusing, and her five two-week-old pups. Come on, Nana, we'll put puppies in here. Her coat is in a terrible state, with fur missing on her back end. Girl. Unfortunately, the situation's not really changed since I was there on the weekend. There's lots of feces all over the place, urine. You can see just fleas running through the dogs. It's not nice, it's uncomfortable for them. They're all scratching in there, they're all nibbling. So I'm just happy that we've actually managed to get them out of there eventually. Is everyone in? With the full load, Jackie needs to get this canine clan checked out by a vet. Wow, Jackie's certainly got her hands full with that lot. She's not the only one. Now, if you've ever wondered what it takes to train a police dog, then you're in luck, because we're back with super rescue dog Ted and our exclusive access to the sniffer dog training school. I'm fine. <laughs> Good. Earlier this series, we met super spaniel Ted. I like his search ethic already. He's all over it. Rescued from a squalid bedsit, police dog trainer Lee Webb saw potential in him. And clearly using his nose, and that's not his eyes. Earning him a place on the sniffer dog course. Yeah, he's got it. He's been teamed up with PC Sam Dutton, and this is the first time she's trained a sniffer dog. Everything from here on is new to me, so a little bit of pressure on myself, because I don't want to let Ted down. Come on then, mate. You've got a big day today. The serious instruction from trainer PC Lee Webb starts here. Big day today. Yeah, it's a very big day Introduce today. Ted to <laughs> three substances. Three. Dogs are invaluable in the fight against crime. They make our job uh, considerably easier when it comes to detecting illegal substances. And I can't see a time when we won't be using them to help us. What we're going to do to start with is we're going to load him up for clicker. So I'm going to hand the tools over to you, all right? Yeah. So it's click ball. They're building Ted's response to a clicker. As long as he gets that yeah. sound reward, sound reward, sound reward, OK? Have a look, play with that. Good, nice. To Ted, the clicker indicates a reward is coming. Playtime with a ball. I'll just distract him and then you click and be ready to give that ball. Ted? Yes, Ooh, we're there. Good okay. boy. But before he can find drugs, they need to test him on finding something familiar, a tennis ball. Sam's going to work him along each chair in turn. And hopefully, when he gets to the ball, oh, yeah, I know that smell. That's a tennis ball. And we'll get a reaction from him. So we're just going to pop that in between the two chairs. OK, Sam? Ted looks keen to get cracking. So what we're looking for is a pause or a recognition of some sort of scent. OK, go for it and he's off to a flying start. Okay. So that's what we were looking for. We were looking for a reaction from the dog, and we mark the behaviour we want, then he gets to play. Dogs are superior to us when it comes to smelling for things. They have over 200 million more scent receptors than a human being, which makes them much better at locating substances than we are. Right, we're ready now to start the formal introduction of substances, OK? okay. okay. Now for the real challenge. Ted has to sniff out three drugs, which will be hidden alongside the ball. Amphetamine, cocaine and ecstasy. So when the dog goes out in a moment, he's actually looking or sniffing for the ball. When he inhales, he's going to take the smell of the ball and the scent of the drugs in at the same time. Find it. Ted's making it look easy, so Lee's going to up the ante on the novice duo. Oh, you're very good. Right, now we're going to surprise her, OK? <laughs> so I've just taken the ball out, so Sam won't be aware of this. So from now on, Sam's dog is just going to be searching for drugs only. So it's a big step, a crucial step. Same again, mate, all right? Excited. So just. <laughs> He's excited, is he? Oh, very. Yeah. No, very. Yeah. So we can see the anticipation, can't we? 
good. I'm a bit like an anxious father here. <laughs> <laughs> so he's working her in quite nicely. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Ted. Good yeah. boy! <laughs> it's a good feeling when you know that a team is starting to work well together and that the dogs, it's got what it takes. It's, it's a real pleasure to watch. Let's see the thrill on Sam's face when she sees that her dog's actually now searching for drugs, OK? Not a tennis ball and drugs. This is just the drugs. So you can be able to get the ball out. OK. Where is the ball? So he hasn't had a ball in there. Oh, so clever, <laughs> do I get all the moves? <laughs> oh, wow. No, he's trained. He's yeah. <laughs> he so That's fantastic. Start, Ted's on a high, but will he still be top of the class as his training continues? Stay with us to find out. Right, Nana, are you going to let us see your pups? Coming up. I hope you can see them. They're running right off his little face there. Are flea-infested Nana and her tiny two-week-old pup's problems only skin deep? It can make them quite anemic and make very ill. It can kill them. And we catch up with Zeus to see how he's adapting to life away from the owner that beat him. He can still be a little bit unsure at first of people that he doesn't know, but literally after a treat or two, he's your best friend. <laughs> Hi, guys! In Sunderland, a flea-infested family of four adult dogs and five puppies... Who wants a doggy? have been signed over to Inspector Jackie Miller. This is Jessie. She's 12. And she's brought this muttly crew to be examined by vet Kirsty Hosford. Pumba. Pumba, as in Pumba from The Lion King. Pumba. Apart from fleas, Granny Jessie and Big Brother Pumba appear to be OK. A bit of flea treatment then, maybe? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Next one. So vet Kirsty turns her attention to the young family. This is Marley. Starting with Dad Marley. Hello, Marley. You good boy. He's got some little scabby areas here on his back. He just needs flea and worm treatment as well. He's in reasonable body condition. But it's Nana, who is actually the mama, and her puppies that Jackie's most concerned about. This is Nana. Come on with me, Nana. 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 <laughs> She's got a lot of fur loss. She's got a lot of fur loss, hasn't she? Got to use. Yes. This is an allergy to the flea bites. So whenever the fleas bite her, it causes a, an irritation on the skin and she licks it at herself and pulls the hair out and gets secondary infections. But actually, her skin's not looking too bad. But she does have loads of fleas. She's still, oh, God, oh, she's got a little collection there. there, isn't she? Collection of them. Oh, yeah, she's got a little look at them all. as well. Good girl. <laughs> Okay. What are you worried about? Good girl. Puppies are there. She doesn't have loads of milk. On the weekend, I had to drop food off for the owner. She had very little food. Ah, uh, right. So okay. I don't know if she's been getting exactly what she needs. Good girl. Right, Nana. Are you going to let us see your pups? Hmm? Hello. You can see the fullies running on them, though. Mm. Nana's tiny two-week-old pups are teeming with fleas too, making them itchy and distressed. Oh, and all it, and there's one and another one. Oh, look, you can see them. Oh, they're running everywhere. Oh. Fleas are parasites that thrive in warm, damp environments. Their eggs can live for up to a year in carpets, furniture and bedding. I think we'll spray these pups before they go down to the animal centre. OK. Um, and then at least we know that they've been done, cos they have got a lot of fleas that run right over his little face there. Yeah. Little small pups, that it can make them quite anemic and make them very ill and can kill them. But there's good news for this little brood. These pups are quite robust, so they'll probably be fine. They don't, they don't look anemic at all. And they're certainly not unwell. Medication given to adult dogs would be too strong for such tiny pups. So Jackie and vet nurse Helen Johnson set to work with a flea spray. I know, I'm sorry, darling. 
There you go. And just give it a squidge around. Squidge around. Well done, Pops. Oh. Oh. Get them, get them. Nasties. You all look wet. That's a good job done. It's only when all the pumps have been sprayed that they can see how bad the flea infestation is. Oh, you can see them running for, a, running for the hills. Yeah. Look at them all. Poor little things. Mm. Everywhere. It's like his head's actually moving. Oh, it's making my skin crawl. It's been a long time since I've seen that many fleas on a puppy and, and they were all running over everywhere. So I'm glad that they've came here because potentially if they hadn't and they hadn't been signed over, those pups could have been ill. Good boy, Marley. Oh. Oh. They're all loaded in the van and I'm going to take them to the animal home to get them sorted and bedded down, uh, ready for rehoming. Right, see you in about 10 minutes, dudes. We'll find out how this young family settle into a flea-free life later. But first, I'm finding out more about what you should consider if you're thinking of taking on a puppy from Centre Supervisor Simon McArdle. Simon, these are puppies, aren't they correct? Yep, you are correct, they are puppies. They're identifiable by the fact that they won't do what you want, <laughs> go where you want. If you wanted to get a puppy, what should you know? I mean, I should say, first of all, that you should go to your local animal centre, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So rescue centres are um, always full of wanted litters. Other things to consider is that, you know, they're a huge time commitment, a lot of training, a lot of socialising. At what point can you start getting them to do what you want? <laughs> <laughs> training starts from day one, really. If you don't want to have a dog on the bed or maybe on the sofa, if you kind of make that a rule from day one, then it's going to be much easier for them to, to learn that from the start. Whereas if they're allowed to do what they want right from the start, and then you try and teach them new things, it's going to be really confusing for them. So be consistent with what you're trying to teach them and start you know, building that bond, giving them that training. So it's a nice experience for both of you. And it's a good idea if they can get on with other dogs. So when does socialisation begin? I so think. that again, is the word for making friends that we use in Dogland. Begins um, at a very early <laughs> age. Um, as soon as they're old enough, for the vaccinations around nine weeks old. Um, and it's really important at that you know, young age where they're really inquisitive and you know, want to experience new things, that you allow them to do it in a positive way so they grow up to be you know, confident dogs that take new experiences in their strides and enjoy meeting new people and, new, and other dogs. But meeting other dogs can bring its own disasters, can it not? It can do, yep. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's why it's important to have uh, your dog spayed and neutered. I mean, one of the reasons why animal centres you know, around the country are so full is because of unexpected litters. So, socialise them, chip them, spay or new to them, train them. It's a long list. <laughs> <laughs> While these little ones are destined for a life of pampering, we're heading back to the West Country to catch up with a dog that likes to earn his keep. Spaniel Ted, originally rescued from a filthy bedsit, has been going great guns in his first week of sniffer dog training. He's already cracked finding a combo of three drugs together, but now he's got to detect a single substance, cocaine, in an unfamiliar environment. Hopefully, he'll give us a freeze on the box. <laughs> Don't worry, until he actually sniffs that box, we're not going to to worry about it, OK? So we just got to maintain our call, cool, you know? He's gone. It's quite a big step. Ted's struggling to find the drug, even though it's right under his nose. Just put him on the lead a minute, Sam. So Lee tries a different tack. OK, what I want you to do is, just like it was a chair, task him straight to the box, OK? OK. Because what, what might be happening is we've had three substances out together. Yeah. If he's not taken on one of those on board, it might be the reason it's like, no, that's not the one I recognise. Come on, Ted, you can do it. No, we're not getting any sort of recognition there at all at the moment, no. are we? Nothing. No, because he's still... It's nothing, he's still working, he's still sniffing. Yeah. No. OK, back to the drawing board. It's disappointing, but Lee has to take Ted back to basics, sniffing out three different drugs in a space he's more comfortable with. Ted. Starting with amphetamine, but Ted seems more interested in jumping than sniffing. So each one, make sure he sniffs it. That's it. Yay! Good boy! Yay! Good boy! Thank you. 
Thank God oh, for that. Got it. Yes. I'm a bit relieved there, Sam. <laughs> Fine, we're cool. We're cool. We're okay, cool, I'm relieved. Man. I'm relieved. We're cool. Okay. We know. I'm not impervious to disappointment, and uh, I was really disappointed. Well, hopefully, we're back on track now. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to put one of the other substances out, do the same thing again until we've done it with all three. To me, when I turn up every morning, we've got to go out there, we've got to produce the goods. We've got to go out there and work really hard as a team because if we don't, we might not we might not be a team. That that's that, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Clever dog. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Ted has indeed come up with the goods. <laughs> I'm going to make him work a little bit harder. He's had successful searches of both ecstasy and cocaine. Good boy. Good boy. But could he be trying to put one over on both Lee and Sam? Well, as I understand it, he's trying to shortcut to his reward. He's trying to be clever, so just let him leave it when he, in his own time. So he knows that if he shows that freeze that we're looking for, what has happened then has come the clicker and his reward. So because he's super clever, he's now offering up that behaviour to get his reward quicker. So he's got to learn that actually, no, that isn't what we want. We only want it when you're right. He's a clever dog, you know. But is he clever enough to do what he couldn't do before? Find drugs in an unfamiliar environment with lots of other smells. It's something he'll have to do in the line of duty. I have no idea how well this is going to go, but we're going to give it a shot. And um, it's quite extreme. We've got a hide and a skip. Ted's had nothing like this before, so it's, it's quite a big ask for him, really. This time, they've reduced the amount of drugs to just one gram of cocaine hidden in a beer can. Find it. Oh, ah, ah, ah. What's you got there? <laughs> Something sandwich. Oh, dear. It's not lunchtime yet, Ted. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> oh, he's got it. He's got the scent, though. Got... Come on, Ted. Focus. <laughs> Good boy. Find it then, Teddy. Yay! Yes. Good yes. boy! Well done, Ted. A relieved end to the day. I got where I wanted to be. Uh, we've got Ted finding substance down to a gram, and that's what we set out to achieve this morning. Ted has made amazing progress. This unwanted rescue spaniel could soon be a valuable working dog. I would be really distraught if he didn't make it through his course. I'd be absolutely heartbroken because I've fallen in love with a little dog in just over a week. We'll catch up with Ted again later in the series. Four weeks ago, Inspector Jackie Miller rescued a family of dogs who were infested with fleas. And today she's back to pay mum and her pups a visit. Hi, guys! Are we going in? <gasps> Good girl, Nana. She's doing really, really well. Just an amazing mum, aren't you? Being sniggly coming down. When, I, when I've been in the animal home, come down to see how she's getting on, see how the puppies are progressing. Most of our fur has come back now. It's still not as dense as here, but it's all grown back. It's nearly there. Yeah, good mummy. You are so good. With mum on the road to recovery, there's been a huge improvement with her little ones too. Oh, it's amazing to see them from what they were. They were the size of your head. <laughs> I can't even see one little flea. Mm. I couldn't have seen more fleas and puppies the last time I saw you. Mm. More fleas and puppies. All of them are just... <gasps> if you do that to me, laces, I can't go and do more. <laughs> Get off. He's a naughty. <laughs> She's not up for rehoming yet, but all the puppies are spoken for. With all the puppies now reserved, Jackie's happy she came to their rescue. There's a high potential that if the puppies hadn't have been treated for the amount of fleas that they had, um, you know, they could have developed some complications because of it. And they might not have all been here. And to see them like this is just amazing. 
Best part of the job. <laughs> ah, get off! Yeah, get off them, guys. Jack is going to need her shoes because there's good news for another member of the family. <laughs> Marley! The pup's dad, Marley, has found his fairy tale ending too with the Story family. Look at him running around! Woo! They've reserved him and are looking forward to taking him home very soon. And with her laces intact, Molly said. Jackie's joining them. No kisses. More kisses. Sit. I knew company for Rosie, the dog. She's on her own and she's just lying around all day, so she needed a friend. And uh, also, I want the children to grow up loving dogs. He's going to be your little pal. Crazy dog. Look at that face. He's just amazing. And look what he's doing with the kids now. They already love them, so that's a good sign, isn't it? And, uh, and at least Marley will let them play, whereas Rosie doesn't. She, she, she runs away and hides. <laughs> Marley! Such a nice feeling to see them just out and about in this sort of environment and getting to know where they're going, you know? It's, uh, it's really, really nice to see. Ah, just what we like. Happy endings all round. Coming up, we catch up with German Shepherd Zeus and see if there's a happy ending for him too. Um, we've got bundles of energy. He's just a big, playful puppy, to be honest with you. And if you think you've got what it takes to be a dog rescuer, we might just have the one for you. Earlier, we met anxious German Shepherd Zeus. At just 11 months old, his owner had been filmed beating him. But Inspector Mel Fisher came to the rescue. He looks OK, but obviously we need to just get him checked over by the vet to make sure. Thankfully, there was no lasting physical damage. Duty Pops, can I have a little look, darling? But unsurprisingly, he was showing signs of anxiety. I know you're nervous, darling. As well as being forced to wear a pinch collar. You can see, look, it's left imprints on my hand. Good boy. Well done. Good boy. Five months on, and Zeus has been living at Blackberry Farm Animal Centre in Aylesbury, where animal care assistant Charlie Wright has been helping him rebuild his confidence. When he first came in, he was a bundle of nerves. He would cower away from us, he'd growl at us in the kennel. He didn't trust us. He can still be a little bit unsure at first of people that he doesn't know, but literally after a treat or two, he's your best friend. <laughs> he's got bundles of energy. He's just a big, playful puppy, to be honest with you. But it always amazes me how loving and forgiving they can be. He might be forgiving, but Zeus did get justice for his terrible treatment. His ex-owner pleaded guilty to causing unnecessary suffering, receiving a 12-week suspended prison sentence, a ban from keeping animals for five years, as well as 100 hours of community service and over £600 in costs to pay. It was reported that Zeus's owner had shown remorse for his actions, and if he could go back and change things, he would. And just seven weeks after sentencing, Zeus was snapped up by a new loving owner, Nicola. He caught my eye and straight away, that was it. And the feeling's mutual. He's very loyal already, very protective. Loves his cuddles. He's always climbing on you, he thinks he's a lap dog. He does love a cuddle, so it is nice. Since landing on all paws with Nicola, this playful chap is coming on in leaps and bounds. Considering what he has been through, he, he isn't that nervous of people on the whole and, you know, he doesn't shy away from anything. This come. come on, come on. When you have dogs like this, you need to be really confident around them because they pick up on your emotions. So the fact that I don't get worried about things and sort of stay nice and calm, hopefully that makes him realise that everything's good and nothing bad's going to happen. It's worlds apart from where Zeus started life. I'd like to think he's got a really good home with me. We love our exercise, go out running with him. 
He loves his swimming as well, so we go down to the River Thames every now and again and he's straight in. He goes to dog classes and he's doing really well there. He's a very intelligent dog and he, he wants to please all the time. He's really willing to learn. Zeus really has settled into his new home. He um, comes and wakes me up in the morning, so I get a wet nose in my face to wake me up. Who needs an alarm clock, Pain? He prefers to sleep downstairs on the sofa, I think. And he thinks I don't know, but I do. <laughs> you silly boy. Oh, silly. Oh, we're going to have a lovely future together. Yeah, a very long one, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Full of fun. Good on you, Zeus. After what you've been through, you deserve it. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Molly, Molly, hello. Boy, what's this? Good boy. Come on. This is Marley. He's a one-year-old crossbreed. He's been here at Blackberry Farm for nearly nine months now, and we can't understand why he hasn't found a new home. Come on, Marley. Yeah, good boy. Three words I'd use to describe Marley are friendly, lovable, and excitable. <sighs> Marley would need quite a bit of training because he's only a year old. With children over the age of 10, four. Good boy, another one. Good lad. Marley's very friendly. His favourite thing in the world is either running around with a tennis ball, going crazy around the field, or sitting on your lap and trying to be a lap dog. Just like he is now. <laughs> Good boy. I'd definitely be sad to see him go. He is definitely one of my favourites here, but I'm really hoping he does find a new home soon. Good boy. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, Remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Inspector Kira Benham fights to give five undernourished and flea-ridden dogs a new life. I'm going to have to get police down here and I'm going to have to remove the dogs. The time's run out, guys. The time's run out. An abandoned staffy left tied to a railing Inspector Anthony Joins comes to the rescue. What's it is? Can we get well? She's oh. been tied up. He's nice, isn't he? Yeah, he's lovely. And we meet Guinness, the cheeky spaniel who kept his high spirits despite a terrible neck wound. Even the degree of infection and the proximity of the wound to major structures definitely could have been fatal. 